It's time for another design lesson. Let's talk about what a mudroom is. Sarah's got all the tips for you to create the perfect mudroom or entryway. You'll have yourself a mudroom ready to roll out the welcome mat. What's the hardest working part of your house? Well, as someone who spends a lot of time in the country, I would have to say that I think our mudroom works really hard every day, every week, in every month of every season. And let's talk about what a mudroom is. A mudroom is exactly as it sounds. It is a small room that is designed to be the place where you come in from outside and you take off those muddy boots, wet outerwear, and can leave it in that zone. And having a mudroom is... <laughs> dog walking through the mudroom now. Yeah, she says, could you finish talking about mudrooms because I'd like to be fed. Having a mudroom which is designed with durable, practical materials helps us keep our life organized. But even if you're not living in the country, you need a place for the kids to come in after school, drop their stuff, their bags, their gear, their coats, their boots. There's so much stuff. So what I want to talk about today is what are the considerations for designing practical, hard wearing and stylish mudrooms and entryways. So first up, let's take a look at the mudroom from Sarah's house season three. This was our first farmhouse project and this is a mudroom that I still really like. It makes me smile to this day. In designing this room, I wanted to think about some key criteria, and these are things that I think about in every single mudroom we design. First of all, durable flooring materials. Critical, important, and this is the recipe for success. Two, durable wall materials. I always put a big focus on making sure that whatever's on the wall is up to the task. Three, storage. Storage, 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 you can't get enough of it. Four, hooks. Hooks are the easy way to help conquer clutter and we'll talk more about that. Five, how about open shelving? Open shelving holds baskets. Baskets hold all that loose and messy stuff and that is always a good idea. And lastly, personality. Some fun, some design, some color, some wow factor. No matter how big or small your mudroom is, I wanna help you make it awesome. All right, so. Here we are in the farmhouse mudroom. Here's what's interesting about this space. It was the natural point of entry, but it was originally a living room, a really terribly ugly living room. And we decided that in order for this farmhouse to function fabulously, we needed to dedicate some major space to this all important entry area. So first up, we installed a pair of closets flanking a nook. And what this offers is dedicated storage on either side, plus a different storage option in the middle. Look at this, an antique piece of furniture with drawers, because when you come in, you always need that place. Where am I going to drop my keys? Where am I going to put down the mail? A mirror so you can check your look. Hooks go up the side so you can always grab a hat when you're on your way out the door. I often like closets that have two doors instead of one because it takes less circulation space. When you open those two little doors instead of the giant swing of one door. What you'll notice about these doors is these are also a super fun, fabulous color. These are cheery cherry red. Actually, if I recall correctly, the color is called burnt peanut red or burnt peanut butter red. Something about peanuts and red, okay? How do you burn peanut butter? I don't know, burnt peanut red, I don't know. It's a funny name for the color, but it's stuck in my mind. Why these doors? Why this color? Why do colored doors? You will see as we go through this, I am a fan of colored doors. And in this case, this mudroom looks through to an orchard and I took inspiration from the views beyond. And I was thinking about those gorgeous, lush, juicy apples hanging in the orchard and I wanted to somehow bring the outdoors in. I'm always thinking about how to connect the space to the place and its surroundings. And so that's where the original inspiration for these fun red doors comes from. But why red also? Because why not have fun? A mudroom is a place where you transition through. You come in, it exudes a warm welcome, and you move on. So if there's a place to be daring, your mudroom is certainly it. 
What's the practical consideration for choosing colored doors? Well, they're not white, so they don't show dust, they don't show bangs and scuffs and scrapes, and so this makes them a really good defense against everything, the onslaught of stuff and mess that comes into your mudroom. Make sense? Okay, let's talk about that flooring that I mentioned. Floors are so important in a mudroom. This is not a place for wood flooring in my opinion. And this is not a subtle opinion, this is, a, this is a strong opinion I have here. This is where you need to invest the money either in tile or natural stone. The flooring in this mudroom, this is a tumbled cobblestone marble. And why does it work? When dirt dries, it is the color of this cobblestone marble. So it is super forgiving for a mudroom. What's nice is it's honed. It has kind of softened rustic edges. So you'll never see scratches, you'll never see imperfections. You can also think about layering in a carpet. In this case, it's a flat woven wool clean. The reason why this works is it doesn't have a big thick pile that'll get soggy. Instead, a flat woven carpet takes a lot less time to dry out. Take a look at this little mudroom, and this is a little mudroom. In fact, this entry was originally the laundry station, and so out went the washer dryer, and instead in went a very simple built-in bench. This is literally made with inexpensive big box store lumber. Above it, we installed tongue and groove paneling, and the reason why I like this is, first of all, if I'm installing hooks, I wanna make sure that those hooks aren't gonna pull out of the wall. And if they're just installed in drywall and the kids put heavy backpacks full of books and layer as many coats as possible onto those hooks, you know what's gonna happen? They're gonna pull out. So here's an easy trick. You can install tongue and groove paneling just on the wall behind the bench. Notice in this little area, I also added two open shelves. I like two open shelves because the top one can be for helmets, hats, big bulky things, and the lower shelf can be at a height where you can just grab and go with your basket. Everybody in the family can have their own basket. The good thing about labeled baskets is it really cuts down on, mom, where's my? Everybody knows where to find their stuff. It makes it super simple. In this mudroom, we use that cobblestone marble again. However, this time we installed it with a little bit of a carpet pattern detail. Because this mudroom is so small, I just wanted to inject a little bit of personality. You can install a chair rail profile, and if you put in a chair rail, it allows you to paint the lower surface in a different paint color. Maybe you wanna choose something darker so it's more durable, or maybe you wanna choose a paint finish that has a little bit more sheen. Again, scrubbable, durable, wipeable, all of these things are pertinent decisions when you're thinking about a mudroom and your first line of defense against dirt, grime, and mess. Because if you don't stop that dirt, grime, and mess at the front door, you know where it's going? Right inside the house. Yeah, you see what I mean? I used to have a nice kitchen until my husband started letting chickens in the house. I know it's cold, but you guys gotta go back out there. Sorry. Okay. Back to mudrooms. In the case of this home, because the entry area was so small, I knew we needed to add additional storage elsewhere. So I created a mudroom in the basement. I took what used to be a furnace room and instead we partitioned it off. We outfitted it with closets. We installed a stone floor. We put hooks, shelves, benches, and storage to make sure that this room was able to conquer all the clutter. Here's a little trick for you. You can buy in-stock doors from your big box store. Then you can scale them according to the size of the amount of wall space you have. I was able to install three separate closets. There were no closets here before, and this is the simplest installation. We did two by four framing on the inside, and then just did flat stock trim between each of the door panels to make it that we could maximize the space. Each of these closets holds so much stuff. What if you have a window? Well, check this out. Because this space is on the lower level, there was a window up high. I didn't want to lose the light, so instead what we did was we built a closet based on cutting off one panel of these doors. We just cut the top panel off, we made shorter doors. And inside of these closets, this is shoe storage, shoes and boots only. Okay, so that's experiment two with colored doors. 
Now we go on to experiment three, and that's where we live now at Starlight Farm. And our mudroom has, oh, these great blue doors, a super durable floor. When you're thinking about buying stone, I want you to make sure you ask your supplier, how durable is this stone? On the spectrum of porosity and durability, limestone is at the bottom. It is the softest and it's the most porous. So maybe not the best choice for your mudroom. Next up, you go to marble. Beyond marble, quartz. Beyond quartz, granite. Eh, I'm not really a fan of granite, so I love a quartz floor. And the floor that we installed here is wildly durable. What I think is fantastic about it and something that I'm usually looking for in a mudroom floor is a certain amount of veining. Can I ask you a question? You mentioned porosity? Yes. What about slipperiosity? Yes. So, <laughs> good point. So what's great about this floor is if you choose a floor that has some color variation, it always looks fabulous. Doesn't matter if it's wet or dry, whether people have tracked in a little bit of mud, who cares? It always looks good. Speaking of wet floors, I would always advise against a polished finish in a mudroom. You want something that is the least slippery surface you can possibly find. So choose a honed material for sure. Here you can see how easy it is to grip a honed quartz floor. Unlike our kitchen, which exhibits a high degree of slipperiosity. Then again, maybe someone shouldn't be letting chickens in the house in the first place. Okay, we've done apple red doors, aqua doors, smoky blue doors. Ooh, how about dark gray doors? Mm, these look incredible. This is a historic home that had a whole series of closets. And in order to inject some personality to a room that was literally just made up of doors, we decided to paint them in dark gray. This is Railings by Faro and Ball, a really fabulous color. And what it does is it highlights all of the detail that is in the trim surrounding all of these doors. It also acts as a cooling agent against this terracotta floor. So this is an original quarry tile floor that's been installed in this home for over 40 years. The clients wanted to keep it and we said, sure, why not? Here again, you see a beautiful, this is an entry piece. This is an art deco cabinet. And one of the things when you're thinking about how to outfit your mudroom, think about where you can pull other pieces from. This cabinet was the dining room buffet. But then once they moved into this house, we said, hey, why not put it right here? Because you open the door and you walk in and you land on this beautiful piece of furniture. What a warm welcome. And what a great way to think about repurposing the items you already have. Does a mudroom solution need to be expensive? Absolutely not. This is the ski closet here at Starlight Farm. And this entire room was made using scraps. It was made with all the leftover plywood and trim pieces that we had from building this house. And so you don't need to have custom made millwork done. You can get your carpenter to help you create smart storage solutions that are also stylish. So what we did here, there are four cubbies. Everybody has boot storage underneath. Everybody has a hanging rod, hooks on either side, and then a series of shelves above. A fun country style fixture illuminates the room and the final finishing touch is doors. So that if it gets really junky in there, you can just close the doors. But just remember, you can always find solutions that are creative, customizable, and cheap. What if you really want a mudroom, but your house isn't designed to have one? Well, in this case, we took what was a kind of workroom, and this is a chalet project that we did. If you watched our contemporary chalet project, look at this! The gray paint combined with the barn board in here, Chris, is magic. Here's what we did. We bought reclaimed barn board online. We found it on Kijiji. We got some rough sawn lumber to make the bench. Now, that lumber was not the same color as the barn board because it hadn't been outside weathering for over 100 years. Easy solution here. We got some gray stain and we stained the bench so it looks like the barn board. Also, we stained a shelf above. We installed rustic iron hooks. I like to stagger the hooks up and down so that it allows for a little bit more room for whatever you're trying to dry to hang 
and to spread out. More airflow is always a good idea. So staggered hooks there. Just outside of the mudroom, we created a super skinny console using some leftover barn beams and a teeny tiny piece of quartz. So now this place has both that nice entry moment and then we have the super hard working area that holds all the junk. What if you've got an existing small entryway and you're just trying to think, how do I give it a bit more personality? Well, here's another look from another project from way back where we installed barn board just on one wall. So you walk in and instead of a feature wall done in a feature paint color, we did an accent wall of barn board. And then we cut down some extra barn board into little strips, which we installed on the side walls, two of them, and hung hooks all across. This is a small room for a busy family and it holds lots of stuff. We've seen lots of mud rooms with stone floors, but how about a tile floor? First up, this is our little teeny tiny mudroom entryway in our Retro Ranch Reno. And we use three different colors and then we set them in a diagonal pattern. I just think this is fun because there's not a whole lot going on in this room. It has angled ceilings, so the angle of the hexagonal tile pattern kind of riffs on that. Then we installed wallpaper on the walls here. So instead of paneling, we went with wallpaper and this can be another great way to add some durability. In a small entryway, it's nice to think about adding a dramatic wallpaper, something that adds texture, that adds pattern, and that it makes sure that you don't see any bumps and scuffs and scrapes on the walls. Hmm, that makes sense. Our next look at these hexagonal tiles is a slightly different look. These are oversized and they've been installed in a more staggered random pattern. Just two colors, but it still creates that casual vibe for chalet living. This is installed in an open concept chalet. So when you step in the door, you can see all the way through to the living room. And the living room is a monochromatic mix of deep charcoals and creams with accents of cranberry red. So yes, naturally we had to go with cranberry red on those doors. Because this is a country space, our clients wanted it to have a relaxed, casual country vibe. So we had the contractor take in stock slab doors and then apply that classic barn motif, that X right over the doors. So this is a combination of gray and red, all monochromatic, and it all ties in to the open concept plan throughout the rest of the house. But what if you like minimal monochromatic Scandi style? Well, this one's gonna be right up your alley. This mud room is installed in our Alpine farmhouse project. And here, there's gonna be a sauna, a great bathroom, laundry, a mud room, on the walls as a durable solution. This is Penny Gap, a little bit like shiplap a little bit like tongue and groove, but instead these are boards that overlap like shiplap, except they have a narrow, narrow gap that's about the thickness of a penny or a nickel. You might see it called penny gap or you might see it called nickel gap. Shiplap is often super wide. These are probably more of a five, six inch board width. And we've installed them horizontally because horizontal always looks crisp. It always looks contemporary. And this is a great use of this material. To highlight the painted white walls, we've introduced accents of natural white oak. So what you'll see is it comes down on the handrail like a ribbon. And then we had our carpenter on site build us this L-shaped bench. So simple, so streamlined, so durable, and so much space to tuck boots and shoes underneath. On the other wall, we have these fabulous peg hooks, plus another bench, plus a shelf. This mudroom will always look sleek and stylish, even when ready to conquer all that clutter. Couple last ideas to share with you. Even if it's compact, your mudroom can work. So here's a look at the mudroom from Sarah Off The Grid season two, which happens to also be adjoined to the living room. So having it look good is key. In this case, we added an addition onto an existing 1890s house. And so we had the original back wall of brick. Why would you cover that up? Oh. 
There was no way I wanted to cover up. I wanted to celebrate it. I wanted to accent it. We made a great peg hook rack out of a piece that we found in the garage, added a bench underneath, celebrated that fabulous, rich, rustic look of the brick, and then created a room that was all layered in grays and charcoals and muted tones. We added a bank of closets at the end, which just disappear seamlessly yet still offered lots and lots of storage. The dog, hi. As many of you know, Daisy loves a good mudroom. Here's a solution for your closet. If you only have room for a single closet and you want it to feel more open, how about adding mirror to the doors? In our home in the city, I took slab doors, then I installed wood trim down the two sides and installed a piece of mirror that goes all the way from top to bottom on these slab doors. So you could do this with shaker panel doors and just inset that panel of mirror into the existing doors, or you can do something like this, which looks just a little bit more contemporary. Whether your mudroom entry is big or small, brimming with storage, or a little hard pressed to fit it all in, here are the key things that we always want to make sure are top of the list and top of mind in the priorities. A durable and hardworking floor, a bench if you can squeeze it in is always a handy spot. Think about whether there's room for a console or a cabinet that can help stash extra stuff. I always like to have a mirror. We've talked about hooks, open shelving, baskets are key, durable, hard-wearing wall materials, and let's just finish it all off with some accessories. Beautiful lighting, perhaps a nice piece of art on the wall, and you'll have yourself a mudroom ready to roll out the welcome mat. Thanks for joining me and hope you will. Subscribe, click that button to turn on notifications and make sure you don't miss a thing because you know what I'll be coming back with next? More great ideas.